Hi friends, good day. Today, let us try to understand about percentage of completion and its methods, advantages and disadvantages of percentage of completion through this video. Before we go in, please subscribe for more videos. Click the bell icon for updates. According to Sam Altman, once you have figured out what to do, be unstoppable about getting your small handful of priorities accomplished quickly. I have yet to meet a slow moving person who is very successful. What is percentage of completion? The percentage of completion is an accounting method in which the business recognizes the revenue and expenses of a long term project on an ongoing basis depending on the stages of completion or the proportion of work completed in the project. The long-term projects are the projects that span over more than one accounting year. This is in contrast to the other methods used for revenue recognition which is called as completed contract method. In this method, the revenue or the income and the expenses are reported only after the completion of the project. The percentage of completion method of accounting is common for the construction firms that are contractors for buildings, energy facilities, public sector infrastructure and other long term physical project. This is also used by defense contractors and software developers whose business represent a multi year commitment of resources. For software developers, the project must take a span of time and must be significant custom designed project for a client. By following this method, the seller can recognize gain or loss related to the project in every accounting period in which the project continues to stay active. This method works best if or when it is reasonably possible to estimate the proportions of the project completion on an ongoing business or at least should be able to estimate the remaining cost to complete the project. However, this method should not be used if or when there are uncertainties regarding the stages of completion or the remaining costs to be incurred to complete the project. Let's look into the methods. Cost to cost method. Percentage of completion is commonly calculated through the cost to cost method which compares the costs that are incurred to estimated costs. To estimate the percentage of completion, we have to divide the total expenditure incurred from the start to date with the total estimated costs of the contract. It is measured using the formula percentage of work completed is equal to total costs divided by total estimated costs for the contract. The value is then applied to determine the total revenue for the project. Revenue earned is equal to contract amount multiplied by percentage of work complete. For example, if the estimated cost of a long term project is rupees 5 lakh and the cost incurred in the current period is rupees 1 lakh, then the percentage of completion is calculated as follows. Percentage of completion is equal to 1 lakh divided by 5 lakh which is equal to 20 percent. If the estimated revenue of the project is rupees 8 lakh, the revenue recognized is Revenue recognized is equal to 20% into 8 lakh which is equal to 1.6 lakh. Efforts expanded method. The completion of work is measured by the percentage of efforts that are expanded till date as compared to estimated total effort expected to be expanded for each contract. For example, the percentage of completion might be based on direct labor hours or machine hours or material quantities. Units of delivery method. This is the percentage of units delivered to the buyer to the total number of units to be delivered under the terms of the contract. This method is used only when the contractor produces a number of units to the specification of the buyer. The recognition is based on for revenue the contract price of the units delivered for expenses, the costs that are reasonably allocated to the units delivered. When the contractor has any difficulty in deriving or measuring the estimated cost to complete a contract, we have to base the recognition of profit 
on the lowest probable profit until the profit can be estimated with more accuracy. In cases where it is impractical to estimate any profit, other than that a loss will not be incurred, we have to assume a zero profit for the revenue recognition purposes, which means that the revenue and expenses should be recognized in equal amounts until a time when it is possible to get more accurate estimates. This approach is better than the completed contract method as there is at least some indication of economic activity that can be seen in the income statement prior to the project completion. Advantages of Percentage of Completion Method It allocates the cost and revenue pertaining to a particular period based on the extent of completion of the contract or the project and there is no need to wait until the project is completed to recognize the costs and revenue that are incurred in the duration of the contract or project. It does not allocate the proportion of cost that is incurred but is not currently put to use in the project. Hence, it gives a more real estimate of the costs and revenue of the project. Some tax benefits for this method. The percentage of contract method offer a level of convenience and simplicity that the completed contract method does not. The percentage of completion method requires you to get the taxes out of the way each year. Even though this is not convenient in terms of frequency, it can simplify the tax reporting process as you will be reporting a portion of your earnings and costs each year. It allows you to report your expenses each year. Having these expenses accounted for on a yearly basis will help you to lower overall taxable income as any expenses that qualify can be written off. It allows the business owner to take care of any tax adjustments upfront which creates less room for error and simplifies the reporting process. Disadvantages of Percentage of Completion Method this method does not reveal the earnings of any revenue on the financial statements of a construction company until its projects are substantially complete, which gives the readers a financial statement with very poor information about its ability to generate a continuing stream of income except for the projects of such short duration which are initiated and completed within the same accounting period. If the initial estimate of the revenue and the costs of the project are not accurate, then there may be changes and adjustments to them which are done quite frequently that show fluctuations in the revenue and costs noted in the accounting books. This will not give a good picture in front of the stakeholders of the company. This method is vulnerable to abuse by unethical companies. Those who wish to engage in creative accounting can easily move around income and expenses from one period to another period, understating or overstating amounts. Well, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and do share.